Oregon versus Maryland this weekend. Joe, not a lot of people talking about this game. They need to be. I know that Maryland is not the predece- the, the team that anybody thinks that can go into Oregon and clip them. But M- Maryland could create some issues. However, Oregon is the most balanced team in the country. They arguably, from what it's worth, is the best team in the country. But Maryland is not a bad overall football team. How do you see this game going? Yeah, Maryland's got a really good passing attack right now. Billy Edwards Jr. has been a quality Big Ten quarterback, and their receiving group, it, it's deep. Ty Felton has 900 receiving yards this year. Caden Prather could be a first-round pick in the upcoming draft, and Octavian Smith Jr. is a very underrated player to be aware of uh, for future draft cycles or if he's in the transfer portal. He's got a lot of really good traits at receiver, something to just be aware of. Aware of. They are built to get into a situation with any team to play them close because they can pick up big chunk plays. However, I do not like their offensive approach. They're throwing the ball way too much. Most of their rushing plays are uh, to Hemby are reliant on trying to just get him the ball in space behind the line of scrimmage. It's a very weird, clunky offense that is extremely boom or bust. I do not see this situation against Oregon being beneficial for them to have a big game, especially because One of the few weaknesses for Oregon has been their run defense over the past couple of weeks. They're allowing 121 rush yards per game, which is, let me finish with, slowly become something that has piled up. It's still not a super major concern, but Maryland does not run the ball successfully enough to exploit that. And their receiving core could have a good game, but is not dynamic enough in my eyes to like really, really threaten this Oregon secondary. You're going to have Go to call ahead. on me. Okay, okay Blake. Oh, okay. okay. Who told you that that Oregon defensive front seven was a little leaky in the run game last week? Who who, who, who told you that? I guess it was you. I don't remember you yeah. saying that. Just want to mention that. I am monitoring this. Here's the problem. I, I actually agree with everything you said in reference to Maryland. Mm-hmm. Here's the problem, though, in reference to this game for me. As good as they are throwing and tossing the ball around, and I love what – dude, offensively, they're doing things that's just so creative. I mean, they you're right. They can issue you challenges, okay, in reference to what they do passing the football. I lo- uh, Dude, lo- the, their whole creative offensive, like, pass game, I actually love. Here's the problem that I have with, my, with Maryland. Dylan Gabriel is about to eat their lunch. They're yeah. 126 in the country in passing yards allowed. There are 107th in the country in rushing yards allowed. I mean, are in rushing yards. So when you can't run the football and keep their offense off the field and your yeah. secondary is that bad, it is a recipe for disaster. By the way, Tez Johnson or no Tez Johnson looks like the shoulder injury. It's not as bad as they originally thought there. They cannot stop anybody on third down. They can't stop anybody through the air. And if there's a quarterback in this conference – that eat your lunch when you make mistakes, it's Dylan Gabriel. I do think early this game could be moderately close because I do think Maryland can do some things and, like you said, have some explosive plays. Here's one massive issue, though. They are so bad. They are dead last in the Big Ten and in, in, in passing yards allowed is Maryland. And as much as I love their coaching staff, it's, I have two friends mm. that are on that coaching staff, okay? As much as I love them. I cannot. <laughs> like, this is – Joe, if there is a recipe for disaster for Maryland, it is that Dylan Gabriel is going to outright eat your lunch. And by the way, I know that Evan Stewart, for what it's worth, the receiver at Oregon, is not making the necessarily the, – the statistical big plays. Joe, did you see that fade route that he caught in the back of the end zone yeah. last week? What happens when he starts to get going? James gets going. Uh, dude, they're just they attack you in so many different ways. Dylan Gabriel gets them in so many favorable plays and in situations that it could be an issue for you. Here's the thing with Maryland, though. Their front seven is nasty. Joe, they're ninth in the country in run defense. The problem is, is that they're just so bad at a lot. And Joe, it's a it's against Big Ten teams that can't throw the football too, right? Like, so not only are you bad. But you're bad against teams that don't generally throw the football. I just think that Oregon's – look, I'm going to say it. I think this game's close early, but I think Oregon wins big. I think Dalen Gabriel is going to have a career type of day here, and I think that Dalen Gabriel, for what it's worth, he's going to continue to trend himself into this Heisman conversation. 
Right. Maryland has a decent record, but like I, I don't know how many psychopaths like me sat and watched the Maryland Northwestern game. They were a mess against Northwestern, and Northwestern is not exactly the most potent offense in the country. They gave up a ton of big plays. They got ran yeah. completely over. I would expect Jordan James is going to have a huge game. Dylan Gabriel is going to be up to par with what we know that he is going to be able to do with delivering and finding ways to create space and opportunities for his playmakers. This is an easy matchup. I do not see this as an up- upset opportunity, and I think that many Oregon fans are recognizing this as just another small bump in the road as they head towards the Big Ten championship game. Well, look, last week, they or two weeks ago, excuse me, or a couple of weeks ago, whatever it was, they did get clipped by Northwestern. I think it was like 37 to 10. Okay, like it was a really bad performance. Yeah. But I even look at last week, and I wanted to bring this up to you, and, my, and the point that I was trying to make here about their passing defense. You literally had Brosmer, okay, from Minnesota last week, threw for 320 and four touchdowns. Curtis Rourke had his worst game, Joe, where he threw two picks. He threw for 350-plus. I mean, you can look at any game versus teams or opponents against yeah. Maryland. A quarterback that just got benched in Miller Moss, by the way, I know you're going to take a victory lap on that. But oh, even, so Miller, right about that. even Miller Moss went for over 330-plus. This is the best quarterback that you've seen. Is the best passing attack that you've seen. Joe, they are going to now probably allow – their eighth straight 300-yard passer, that's the problem. Philosophy-wise, I think, is where their issue is. Not necessarily play. I mean, they can get picks. I mean, they picked off Rourke twice. They picked off Moss once. I mean, they're they're making plays. Philosophy, they play too much off coverage, and that's where Dylan Gabriel eats you a lot. It is the worst match. Listen, there is no bigger mismatch this weekend in the Big Ten. Dylan Gabriel in this passing attack versus Maryland secondary. And – I, I want to come in here and talk about more things other than one specific thing, but it's just so glaring. I do think Maryland does a lot of really good things in other places. We talked about the run defense being pretty elite, passing offense being pretty elite. Or I shouldn't say elite, really good. I hate using that word elite. It's just everything that they're doing defensively, Joe, has been chaotic. And for that reason, I do think Oregon's going to win. I would take them to win and cover this weekend versus Maryland. They're going to continue to be the most balanced team in the country. By the way, Joe, you want to talk about balance and talking about Oregon. They're 11th in total offense. They're 11 in total defense. They're 11 in passing offense. They're 17. Across the board. Across the board. They are the most consistent team in the country right now. And for that, I'm going to pick them to win and cover. Yeah, easily. This is not a matchup that they're going to to lose uh, or they're going to get upset. They really don't have like a really tough, stressful matchup until they face off with Washington at the end of the year. The remaining games that they have before we move on to the, this next game, they've got Wisconsin after Maryland, and that's it. I think they've got, yeah, they've got a bye week after the Wisconsin game. So their only real tough matchup is Washington, and Washington is extremely beatable because they have been equally as inconsistent as these two other remaining teams that they have. Yeah, just don't look forward to a Big Ten title game. Don't don't get your right. Don't. That's the that's the biggest point is that I'm sure that Dan Landing is emphasizing, hey, these upcoming three games that we have, they're all winnable. They're all very winnable. But if mm-hmm. we get distracted and we're not locked in, we lose the game and we open the door for somebody to edge us out of the Big Ten title game. I forget what the stupid tiebreaker is, and I'm not gonna pretend to try and figure that out right now because we would waste our energy. But you're one thousand percent right, Dan Lanning. The effort needs to be put into Week by week, we didn't earn the Big Ten championship game yet. They have not. And so, look, again, this is just not I, – I think Oregon big. Obviously, I'm taking them to cover here too. So, go over to betonline.ag and you can uh, you can bet that game there. All right, let's move on here. Bet Online remains your top spot for all of your live betting action and contests. NFL, college football, UFC, NHL are all in full swing – Bet online is your number one source for wagering news, odds, trends, and predictions with both desktop and mobile access at any time. Head to Bet Online today and use promo code Believe. That's B L E A V for fifty percent off your first deposit. That is a fifty percent welcome bonus. Bet online, where the game starts. <laughs> 